here's a pretty cool integral involving exponential functions. And by the looks of it, we're in for a pretty wild solution development. So without further delay, let's call our integral here i, so we have something to refer to. And I'd like to start off by making a substitution here to get a better or more relatable structure. So the substitution I'm talking about is letting e to the x equal t. Now this implies that e to the x dx equals dt, and it also implies that x equals the natural logarithm of t. Now what about the limits of integration? Well, as x approaches negative infinity, t will approach zero, and as x approaches positive infinity, t will approach positive infinity as well. So that means our integral i in the t world transforms into an integral from zero to infinity of x squared. Now x is the logarithm of t, so that means we have the squared logarithm of t times e to the negative e to the x, and e to the x is just t, so that's sorted out. And we can expand this term here as e to the x times e to the x dx, where this e to the x dx term is our differential element, and this e to the x term left out is just the t variable. So this is the structure of our integral i in the t world. Now, how on earth is this better or relatable? Well, the relatable part is pretty neat. So recall one of my favorite tools here, the gamma function. Now, gamma x equals the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times e to the negative t dt. So if I differentiate the gamma function with respect to the parameter or the argument x, then we have gamma prime x being equal to switching up the order of the integration and the differentiation operators. By the Leibniz rule, you'll have a partial derivative now with respect to x of t to the x minus 1 times e to the negative t dt. So because we're differentiating partially with respect to x, all the t variables and the functions purely of t are constants. So this e to the negative t term is just a constant, and differentiating this t to the x minus 1 term gives me the repeated function times the natural logarithm of the constant base t, constant in the x world, that is, and the derivative of x minus 1 with respect to x is 1. Okay, so that's the first derivative, and notice that we've recovered one logarithm term from our uh, for our target integral, and oh, here it is. So we needed e to the negative t, check. We needed a t variable, check. And right now we have a logarithm of t, but we need another to be multiplied by it, so we get a squared logarithm. So that's pretty easy. All we have to do is differentiate this again. So the second derivative of the gamma function at x equals the integral from 0 to infinity, once again of e to the negative t, once again t to the x minus 1. And now you have log t times log t, so that's, uh, that's the uh, square of the logarithm. So there you have it. That's almost our target integral i. So our target integral was that from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times t times the squared logarithm of t. So that means all that's left is to plug in x equal to 1. Oh, sorry about that. No, we need x equal to 2. So we have 2 minus 1 t to the 1. Okay, so we're looking for the second derivative of the gamma function evaluated at 2, and that will give us our target integral i. So how do we proceed from here? Well, all we need to do is apply more of the gamma function. So recall the recursion formula, which states that gamma x plus 1 equals x times gamma x. So if we differentiate this with respect to x, we have gamma prime x plus 1 being equal to x times gamma prime x plus gamma x. And differentiate this one more time so that you have the second derivative at x plus 1, and this equals x times the second derivative at x plus the first derivative at x and differentiate this and you get once again the first derivative at x. So just add them up and you get twice the first derivative. Okay, cool. So this is a really nice relation in the sense that it relates the second derivatives at x and x plus 1. So if you plug in x equal to 1, then we have second derivative at 2 being equal to second derivative at 1 plus 2 times the first derivative at 1. 
and we derived the expression for the first derivative at x earlier in the video. So all I have to do is plug in x equal to 1, and I have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times t to the 0, which is a 1, and I have log t dt. Now this here is an integral representation of the euler mascheroni constant. It's negative anyway, so gamma prime 1 equals negative order mascheroni constant. Okay, cool. Now, what about the second derivative at 1? Now, for the second derivative, I'm going to need to invoke the help of the digamma function. So, digamma x equals gamma prime x divided by gamma x, which implies that gamma prime x equals... Much better. Uh, di gamma x times gamma x. So once again, differentiate this with respect to x, and we have the second derivative at x being equal to differentiating the di gamma function gives you the tri gamma function. So you have tri gamma x times gamma x plus di gamma x times gamma prime x. Okay, cool, and run out of writing space almost. Ah, much better. So if we plug in x equal to 1, then we have di gamma, uh, we have the second derivative of the gamma function at 1 being equal to tri gamma 1 times gamma 1 is just 1. Plus we have the di gamma function at 1 times the derivative of the gamma function at 1. Now we know this, we know that this derivative is the negative of the order mascheroni constant. But what about di gamma 1? Well, di gamma 1 equals uh, gamma, uh, gamma prime 1 divided by gamma 1, correct? And gamma prime 1 is negative order mascheroni constant, and gamma 1 is just 1. So that means you have negative order mascheroni times negative order mascheroni. So this implies that the second derivative at 1 equals tri gamma 1 plus order mascheroni squared. And how exactly do we evaluate the trigamma function at 1? Well, it has a wonderful series representation as follows. It's digamma z plus 1 being equal to the sum over the non-negative integers n, uh, rather the sum over the positive integers n of 1 by n plus z squared. So if you plug n z equal to 0 for this relation, then you have tri gamma 1 being equal to the sum over the positive integers of 1 by n squared, which is, of course, the basal identity pi squared by 6. So that means the second derivative of the gamma function of 1 has a very beautiful structure. It's order mascheroni squared plus pi squared by 6. So yeah, this is pretty awesome in itself. And now to piece together everything for our final result, Recall that our integral i was the derivative, the second derivative of the gamma function at 2, and this sorted out to the second derivative at 1, plus twice the first derivative at 1. So that means you have order mascheroni squared, and this here is negative 2 times order mascheroni plus pi squared by 6 which is a wonderful result indeed, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.